Hi, I'm Jane Halley at Planet Retail, and we are at the 2014 World Retail Congress, and I have Nissan Joseph with me. He's the Managing Director of Crocs India. Uh, my first question is, who is the customer in India for Crocs? So amazingly, India has a huge, growing middle-income population, and they also are very aspirational. So while they may not have the standard disposable income that you hear of in nations outside of India, they have a lot of disposable income. They have joint family systems, they stay at home, companies pay for meals, companies pay for transportation oh. if you work for good companies. So that gives them a lot of disposable income. Correct. And today with uh, the proliferation of the internet, they're aware of brands and styles globally. Uh, to the extent that when we first went to India, before my time, we tried to come up with an India-specific line, only to find out that they wanted the global line instead. So oh. the consumer is actually pretty fashion forward. They want the latest. They want what's out there. They don't want to be pandered to. They want it, they want exactly what the rest of the world is wearing. And a lot of them were spending a lot of time and money flying out to Dubai or Singapore to buy the product. Oh. So getting the product available in India has been a challenge because India has its own set of retail challenges. But we have a huge consumer base. So if you think about 250 million households, Jane, roughly, right, in India as households, we're only targeting the top two million households. Oh. Now, unlike most other countries, they don't live in certain zip codes. They are scattered all around. They, they, they live in different environments. They live in tier one, two, three, and four cities. And they go to shop wherever they need to to find the products they want. So the challenge is not finding the right customer. The challenge is to make sure that we can, the customer can access our products when and where they need it. And you're multi-channel, aren't you, in India? Absolutely. So today we, are, uh, we have the uh, e-com partners in India through aggregators. Um, though none of them, like the rest of the world, are making much money, but uh, they're in a cu customer acquisition mode. So w we do have e-com coming on. It's still in its nascent stages in India, relatively new to the Indian market, and we are rapidly expanding that business. We see the e-com channel as being very powerful to be able to reach into zip codes that we can't. For example, traditional retail, modern retail as we call it, um, reaches about 4,000 zip codes in India out of 26,000. Wow. Whereas e-com gives you the ability to get yes. out to north of 15 to 18,000 zip codes. So that's the advantage we're seeing and we're catching it at the right time with the right wave. Well, what, op what an opportunity you yeah, have. it is. Do they understand Crosslight, the technology? Do they buy it because of Crosslight or you fashion? Know, I don't think people always understand what is the magic, but they feel the magic. They feel the love, right? So um, I don't think they can tell you it's Crosslight, but they know that our material is more comfortable. It lasts longer, it doesn't take a compression set, it doesn't wear out. We hear of anecdotes where um, people buy it for their daughter and then mm -hmm. they hand it off to the niece mm -hmm. and then it comes back to their second daughter. Mm -hmm. And you know, this has been a global issue for us. Our products don't generally wear down. So the <laughs> way we keep getting you to buy more products is to come up with more colors, more innovative products, a, a whole new line. And amazingly, uh, clogs, which is what we're iconically known for, represents less than 30% of our business. Oh, so it's really fashion. It's fashion, it's, it's a lot of new styles and not a lot of new silhouettes in the footwear industry. And once you're a croc lover, once you love crocs, which is not hard to do once you give yourself a chance to buy one and try one, we find that they're willing to expand that into the other facets of their life because croc stands for comfort, it stands for fun, it stands for color. And people want that in all aspects of their footwear. And so they're, they're willing to let us extend our brand into the other silhouettes of footwear so they can mm -hmm. be a part of that Crocs e experience. Um, we're at the World Retail Congress. Yes. And what are your major takeaways from the Congress? Well, I think, um, it's first of all, it's an amazing place to be at the World Retail Congress. There's a lot of uh, ideas and angles of view that people have and, and dimensions that they're looking at the business around the globe. So it's not uh, centric to the U.S. or it's not centric to Europe. So it's very exciting to hear thought leaders from around the globe speak. So that's very exciting. I think what we're trying, starting to see as a trend in a lot of these forums is the power of E. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's this is actually stage two of the power of E. First it was e-com, but today it's all about mobile mm -hmm. you know, and how that mobile is changing the world. And, you know, depending on who you believe and what numbers you go by, there's going to be 2.5 billion mobiles that are web-enabled somewhere between 2015 and 2017. Pick your number. It doesn't matter. It's a heck of a lot sure. in a short period of time. Sure. So this seems to be one stage further on the E2 journey. Now it's all about mobile. And it's, it's a natural evolution because, you know, we are a... Um, 
generation mm -hmm. of not millennials, not Y, not X's. Today, it's a generation of screenagers. <laughs> Right, and you, you go from screen to screen to screen. You go well from your, put. your TV screen, which is what started the whole thing, and then now it is tablets and computer screens and mobiles and GPSs in your cars that'll soon be able to talk back to your home so you can control your home temperatures and things like that. So we're screen ages, and what we find is, if you look at the digital age of a consumer, that they act very similar to each other. So if I've been on the web for two years, Jane, and you've been on the web for two years, regardless of the fact that we live in different communities and we're from different socioeconomic groups, we act and behave the same way based on our digital age, mm -hmm. you see. and. Uh, that's a very exciting space because then you can start segregating them as digital age people and that just means you're screenagers. Right. So. Is this your first time at the Congress? It is my first time at this Congress and it's been very exciting. Very good. Well it was lovely meeting you and having a chance to chat. Thank you Jane.